realize one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. And here's your host, Miss Kim Rodman.
How you doing, everybody? I'm Nina Taylor, and here is your Gospel News. The power of forgiveness among members of the African-American communities in the midst of devastating tragedy is remarkable and a testament to our faith. I, too, was amazed how Robert Godwin's children seemed so at ease as they spoke softly about forgiving Steve Stevens, who seamlessly killed their father last week on Facebook Live in Cleveland, Ohio, on a sidewalk. Godwin, 74, was out collecting bottles, as he often did after enjoying an Easter meal with his family. His daughter was quoted as saying, I honestly can say right now that I hold no animosity in my heart against this man because I know that he's a sick individual. I feel sadness in my heart for him. Steve Stevens was 37 years old. He shot and killed himself Tuesday when police trailed him to Erie County, Pennsylvania, after a massive nationwide manhunt. It remains unclear why Stevens targeted Godwin randomly, but Godwin's family isn't dwelling on the rationale. They are focusing more on the healing. But we've seen this type of behavior before from black families who are grieving and announce that they forgive the person or persons responsible for the taking of the life of their loved ones. African American families have a long history with faith. The National Museum of African American History and culture tells many stories of African Americans and spirituality. There is no way we can ever discuss, talk about, or understand the African American journey without truly understanding the very real role our faith has played in our history. Soulful singer and songwriter Tara Dene possesses an unusually depth and maturity that reaches beyond melody and lyrics. Her music has been called Blue-Eyed Soul, reflecting her rich, colorful voice and old-school persona. Her style and voice will captivate you instantly. Music has been Tara Dene's constant companion since her childhood. Tara grew up just outside of San Diego, California. Instead of going to the beach on the weekends, Tara spent most of her time in music rehearsals and head church. Black Enterprise Magazine is seeking nominations for their brand new BE Modern Men of Distinction 2017. Recognizing and honoring the accomplishments of today's man of color now in its third year, BE Modern Men provides weekly profiles and features of today's leaders, executives, creatives, politicians, entrepreneurs, professionals, and agents of change who live out the BE Modern Man theme. It's our normal to be extraordinary. Nominations for the 2017 BE Modern Men of Distinction are being accepted at blackenterprise.com BE Modern Man forward slash nominate. The deadline for the nominations is 11.59 p.m. on May 15th, 2017. Nate Parker's Birth of a Nation wasn't shown much love during this year's award season, but the NAACP saw fit to acknowledge both the actor and his most talked about piece as they recognized the best in black entertainment and literature, which also received six nominations. Hidden Figures was totally snubbed at the Golden Globes, but received three Image Award nominations, including one for Taraji P. Henson for Outstanding Actress in a Motion Picture. Here are your nominations for this year's NAACP Image Awards for Outstanding Comedy Series, Atlanta, Blackish, Insecure, Survivor's Remorse, and The Carmack. Show. Outstanding actor in a comedy series, Anthony Anderson, Don Cheeto, Donald Glover, Dwayne Johnson, and Kevin Hart. Outstanding drama series, Empire, Power, Queen Sugar, This Is Us, and Underground. Outstanding actor in a drama series, Kofi Cerebo, Mike Coulter, Omari Hardwick, Sterling K. Brown, and Terrence Howard. Outstanding actress in a drama series, Journey Smollett Bell, Kerry Washington, Rutina Wesley, Taraji P. Henson, and Viola Davis. Outstanding Supporting Actor in a Drama Series, Alfred Enoch, Jesse Williams, Joe Morton, Jesse Smollett, Trey Byers. Outstanding Supporting Actress in a Drama Series, Omira Vaughn, C.C. Pounder, Cicely Tyson, Lynn Whitfield, and Naturi Naughton. Outstanding <laughs> Movie, Television, or Limited Series or Dramatic Special, American Crime, Confirmation, Roots, the Night Of, and The People vs. O.J. Simpson, American Crime Story. And that's a partial list of your NAACP 2017 Image Award nominees and your gospel news. I'm Nina Taylor. Let's get back to more great gospel music on this great station.
Hello, hello. This is Kimmy Kim, and welcome to the Pastor's Corner. I believe we have. <laughs> Amen. Apostle Urban Whitlow, how you doing? Well, I'm grateful there, Kimmy Kim, and how are you? God bless you. What? You're welcoming back to your show? Oh, my goodness. I feel so honored. <laughs> you know what? I'm not fooling with you tonight. Praise God. <laughs> you, 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 can't, you can't hush me tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would never want to so you bring the knowledge. No matter what, you bring the knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> I got you. I got you. I so appreciate you and thank God for you, uh, you know, and thanking God because um, just getting back uh, from Akron, Ohio, had to go with my wife and handle some business, and the Lord brought us back safely. And I just talked with Elder Ernest Richard, and he was telling me, hey, he said, you, you're going to probably be on your own for a good while tonight because I'm traveling. I says, well, it makes sense to me. I said, so, Lord, what are you going to have me to talk about? And I have something in mind, Kimmy Kim. I, I really believe that I have something in mind. And, and I'm I believe hoping, I, I, And I'm, I'm hoping that what I have uh, will be a help to someone uh, and a benefit as well as a blessing. That is my prayer, and, uh, and I believe that's what God is going to do. Amen? Amen. Amen. So now you know, uh, I'm going to share some things, and if you feel that you would desire to um, stop in and say something, I'm not going to mute you or cut you out or anything. I'm going to let you say a little stuff. stuff. <laughs> well, I feel so honored. I could never, um, now if you ask me a question, I butt in, but I want to hear some teaching. Give me some questions. Well, that makes sense as well. Well, that'll work. That'll work. So I'll tell you what. Let me do this. Um, why don't we pray, and then let's get right on into this word tonight. How about that, okay? Amen. <laughs> Gracious, Amen. Father. Gracious Father, in the matchless name of Jesus, we thank you tonight for the opportunity to come before your people who are with us, O oh God, by the radio waves, by the Internet, or however they are joining us. We appreciate you for this opportunity that we might share your word, share thoughts of wisdom, something to encourage and comfort and challenge, convict and convert your people, even comfort them. We just thank you and we give you praise. We pray that the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. I was... Uh, just conversing with uh, Pastor Elise Whitlow, and I shared something with her, and I believe that this is something the Lord would have me to share with the people of God tonight. Out of the book of uh, 1 Timothy, the third chapter, reading verses 14 and 15, I need you to hear this. It says, These things write I unto thee, hoping to come unto thee shortly. But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, watch this, the pillar and ground of the truth. But I really want to focus on this particular clause. But if I tarry long that thou mayest know how thou to behave thyself in the house of God. And I'd like to reason with everyone tonight as I talk about this particular subject. And I believe the subject I'd like to address tonight is church complaint. Church complaint. Now, if you if, if, if you think about it, uh, Kimmy, if you think about it, there is not a local assembly on the planet, no matter what the denomination may be, no matter what kind of congregation, what size congregation, whether it is a small storefront, whether it is a medium-sized or a mega-sized church, there is always some kind of complaint 
in that church. And what we are discovering in this day and time that it is hard to find churches that are literally thriving because there are constantly revolving door ministries taking place in these churches. Why are there revolving doors? It's because there are constant church complaints. And I I don't know if you have had this to happen, but you've always got someone who finds something wrong with someone, or you find people who who find something wrong with what some people do, with how some people live, with how some people handle things, with how some people um, talk about this or I deal with this. And so, therefore, what happens is we have an issue that is constantly brewing in the church called complaints. Now, let me make sure you understand this. The Bible says, I say unto thee that thou art Peter. This is Matthew 16 and 18. I say unto thee that thou art Peter. And then he says, upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, please understand what Jesus says. Jesus says, I recognize who you are, Peter. I call you a stone. He says, but upon this rock, um, um, I I will build my church. What he does is he takes the focus off the stone and he looks on the massive boulder or the foundation that he is and says, upon this rock, I will build my church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against you. Two things I want to make sure I address. First of all, no church is your church. The church belongs to Jesus Christ. And for a person to say that they founded a church is to take away the credibility of the work that Jesus has done. I know I just made somebody mad, but I'm so tired of going go to these places and I see all these people. Well, the Reverend Dr. So-and-so is the pastor and founder. How, where were you when Jesus founded the church? Because I didn't see your name there because it, it certainly wasn't in the scriptures. I mean, and I don't even believe you were there then. So that bothers me when I see people who say they're the founder of the church. The second thing is this that Jesus builds the church. According to the scripture, the Bible says that God adds to the church daily such as he sees fit that should be saved. And one of the problems is we've got too many people trying to build their church Uh, because they think it's all about them. And so that's why we have a lot of churches or local assemblies that are filled with a whole lot of families, right, but they can't seem to get a whole lot of disciples. Okay, there's a whole lot in that. But let me deal with this. The word church, the Greek word for church is ecclesia. The word ecclesia literally means um, an assembly or to congregate. It means called out ones, those who are chosen. So that brings to mind what the scripture says, that you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. And that peculiar does not mean strange, but it means purchased. And so, therefore, you have to understand what Paul writes to the church of Corinth. He says, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost that dwells in you, and you are not your own, for you are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your bodies, which are not yours. So here's what we have to understand. If we've been called out and we belong to God, it's certainly because of the price that he paid for us. Now, if he paid a price for us, then there must be a reason he did so. And I personally believe that the reason he paid a price for us is so that we would live in a manner that would be pleasing and uh, pleasing to him. Uh, That's what I said, pleasing to him. Not pleasing to people, but pleasing to him. Saying all of that to say this, that when we read this particular scripture, here Paul is talking to his spiritual son, Timothy. And when he talks to Timothy, he gives him some instructions to help him um, to be a good leader and a good pastor, which leads me to say that a lot of the issues that exist in our local assemblies has to do with leadership. I'm not going to leave that out uh, because I firmly believe that if it's in the head, it will filter its way into the body. It is that simple. You can't get around it. You can't get away from it. You cannot change it. What's in your head comes into the body. 
temple. So, therefore, I believe what Paul is telling Timothy is there is a certain way that you have to be if we want to see certain things manifest in the body. There's got to be certain things that we do, certain kind of way that we live. So he makes this clear. He says, Timothy, if you, he says, if you desire the office of a bishop or if you just really want to be a pastor, he says that you desire a good work, okay? And he says this, he says this, he says that you, as a bishop or a pastor, you have to be blameless, the husband of one wife. Uh, uh, he says vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach. Okay, so here's what he does. He makes certain things clear. He's talking to a man about a position for a man. Somebody going to get mad at me. Amen, praise God, but I'm in the word of God. It does not say um, that a woman who desires the office of a bishop desires a good work and she must be the wife of one husband. No, it says the man desires the office of a bishop, desires a good work. He must be the husband of blameless and the husband of one wife. I didn't write it. It's in the book. You can try to change it all you want to. It's still written in the book. Now, what he's doing is he's telling Timothy, this is the kind of life that you have to live if you're going to be a pastor or a leader in God's house. He says you can't. Uh, you, you you have to be blameless, not in the sense that you're perfect, but in the sense that can't nobody point a finger and say this and that is what you're doing and that and this is what you're doing and there's truth to it, okay? Because you're gonna always have accusers. You're gonna always have people who go try to find something on you because you're gonna always have some people who go try to belittle who you really are in the Lord. Now I'm going somewhere with this because I want you to understand church complaints, okay? So watch where I'm going, okay? He says you can't just you have to be vigilant, always watchful, sober, not intoxicated because he said, she said, I heard them say and swayed in your opinions. He says, you have to be of good behavior. That is your conduct. He says, you got to be given hospitality. You got to know how to treat people. He says, you got to be apt to teach. Meaning, you always, you ought to always be able to teach something, no matter what you're dealing with, make it into a lesson that somebody can get something out of it. He says, not given to wine, not a striker. You won't not be hitting on your wife, not greedy, uh, filthy lucre. You shouldn't always want money that bad. Now, he says, but patient, not a brawler, shouldn't be fighting, not covetous, shouldn't be wanting what everybody else has. And one that rules his, well, his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. In other words, if your children ain't grounded, then there's something wrong in your house, and how are you going to handle the house of God? Now, granted, we are in a day and time where these Things have been ignored. There is no doubt about it in my mind. These things have been ignored. Okay? Now, this, watch this. He says, because a man, if he don't know how to rule his own house, how can he take care of the church of God? Okay? He says, not, not a novice. Okay, um, and then he goes on and says, not a novice, a meaning that you're a new convert, um, so you ought to have been in the work of God for some time, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. And that's what we have a lot of people who have fallen into the condemnation of the devil because they are trying to get somewhere that they are not ready to be because they have not been in God long enough to know what it takes to be there. Watch, I'm going somewhere. He says, moreover, he must have a good report with with them which are without. In other words, he, the Bible is saying that if you're going to lead God's people, not only must you um, be able to lead them in the church, but on the outside of the church, there ought to be a good reputation. People ought not to know you as someone cussing up a storm, someone who has this lover here, that lover there, someone who knows that you're gambling, someone knows that you got a drinking habit. He says, you know, you got to have a good reputation with them that are without. Let's keep falling into reproach and the snare of the devil. And this is what the devil wants. The devil wants to say, I knew you were no good, I knew you were up to no good, and I knew you were going to fall to these things. Okay, then he says, not only this, now this is the, to the particular pastor, then he speaks to the deacons and tells them how they got to be grave um, and, and meaning they got to have some kind of dignity and integrity about themselves, not double-tongued, always changing their word, not giving too much wine, uh -huh, not greedy for filthy lucre, holding the mystery of faith and a pure conscience. These are all the things that he's saying. And then he says, and he says, and let these also first be proved. In other words, you got to be examined. You got to make sure that you are ready 
to do this thing that God would have you to do. Watch this, and then let them use the office of a deacon, all right, being found blameless. Same thing about a pastor. you got to have a certain type of character and reputation. Even so must their wives be grave, not slanderous, sober, faithful in all things. Okay, so in other words, even the women should, um, who are wives of these people who are in leadership positions, if you will, ought to know how to handle the people of God. Okay, watch this. Then he says, let the deacons be the husbands of one wife, ruling their children and their own house as well. For watch this, for if they have used the office of a deacon, well purchased to themselves a good a degree, and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ. So here's what I want you to get to. This is what I want to get to. So Paul said, I write these things to you because I really want to come and see you. I want to come. Let me tell you something. If you have an overseer, an apostle, a bishop um, who does not come and see about you, there is something wrong. They ought to come and see about you at some point in time to make sure that things are working right. Now, I'm going somewhere. Watch this because I'm still talking about church complaints. I just want to build this foundation so you get a healthy idea and picture of what we're talking about. So Paul says this to Timothy. He says, I'm right all of this to you. So I really, really, what I want to do is I really want to come and see you soon. He says, but if I don't get the chance because for some reason I am delayed, he says, I want you to know how you to, you ought to behave thyself in the house of God. So if Paul gives instructions on to the leader on how they must um, behave themselves, then how think you that the leader don't have a right to give you instructions on how you are to behave yourself? Oh, wait, wait, you mean to tell me that my, my leader, my pastor is supposed to tell me that I can't do certain things? Absolutely. You mean my pastor, my leader is supposed to tell me I can't commit adultery, I can't fornicate, I can't be gambling and shacking up and all this stuff? Yeah, your pastor has that right to tell you that. Why? Because they know and they have the understanding that there is a certain type of lifestyle you must live. So what I am discovering is we are in a day in time where people are trying to tell the pastor how to live and what to do. And so what happens is we have a whole lot of church complaints because we have people who don't know how to behave themselves or conduct themselves appropriately in the house of God. I just messed somebody up right there because somebody don't want to hear that. But think about this now. Paul gives direction, clarity on how uh, we should be living as leaders. And, have, and so, therefore, leaders have to give instruction to the followers on how they must live their life. But now we got these people or parishioners or laymen who want to tell, turn around and try to say that this person is living that way and that person is living this way. And so now we have a whole lot of church complaints because now what we're trying to do is determine who should be in the church and who shouldn't be in the church. We have people who are saying who should be operating in ministry and who shouldn't be operating in ministry. I know I'm not going to get too many amens on this, but I'm trying to help somebody because I know that somebody has experienced it, and if it wasn't you, then you were probably the cause that somebody experienced it. What we want to do is we want to try to rebuke folk. We want to try to tell people what is right from wrong when we don't even know the word of God for ourselves. And we what we want to do is we want to run and try to tell the pastor how to handle everybody in the church. But we don't want the pastor to tell us how we are to operate in the church. See, because we think because we give so much money that we the pastor should side with us. And because we we are always at every service that the pastor should with us. And let me tell you something. There is no favoritism in 
God, because the Bible makes it clear that God is no respect of person. But we've got all these church complaints in this day and time, people complaining about who can sing and who should be able to lead the song and who shouldn't be leading the song and who can direct the choir and who should be over the Sunday school ministry and who should be over the sunshine choir and who should do this and who should. we got all these complaints in the church. And then you wonder why your local church is not growing. It's not because Jesus ain't building. It's because we got more people complaining to tear it down than we have people praying that God would build it up. That's why we can't see miracles. That's why we can't see healing. That's why we can't see deliverance. That's why we can't see breakthrough. That's why people ain't coming to prayer meetings. That's why they don't want to come to Bible study. That's why they don't want to come to church meetings because they don't want to deal with all these complaints. And the reason all these complaints exist is because we got folk who behave themselves the way they think is okay, but it is not according to what God requires. Watch this. He says, He says, if I carry along, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of the truth. And I was saying, Lord, what do you mean when you say the pillar and the ground of truth? The church is the support and the foundation of truth. Therefore, if the truth has no support or foundation, then people begin to undermine what the church is really about. And so you wonder why folk don't want to come to church. You wonder why they don't want to be affiliated with the church. You wonder why the church is looking more like the world instead of the world looking like the church, all because of church complaints. Wait a minute. And then it goes on and says, without controversy, Great is the mystery of godliness. And what I want you to understand is that what he is saying is I don't even want to make this a challenge or a complication. He says, but great is the mystery of godliness. In other words, it should not be hard for you to understand how to live godly if God had given examples to uh, the leader. And if God had given an example to the leader, then the leader is giving examples to the people. And it makes it clear that Jesus was here in the flesh. And when he was here, uh, he showed us how we ought to live and how we ought to behave ourselves and conduct ourselves. But the reason we don't want to conduct ourselves in this matter is because we want to go above and beyond what Jesus did. Because the Bible says that he was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. And so some of us think that we are greater than Jesus, so we should be tempted and not sin. But yet every time we hear that voice, every time we hear that song, every time we see that body, every time we smell that smoke or whatever it is, we fall right back into the same thing. Why? Simply because we don't want to be godly. And watch this. It is not hard to be godly when we understand that the Bible says that God has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. So it shouldn't be a challenge to live godly when you were created, godliness was placed within you. When you were created, righteousness was placed in you. When you were created, holiness was placed in you. Why? Because holiness, righteousness, and godliness is who God is and what God is. And because you were created in his likeness and after his image, you ought to be the same way. So we have a people who are complaining about your behavior because in the street, in the church, you are glory, hallelujah, hit him in the side, kick him in the side, and all this, eat a banana, slip on a banana, and he's coming in a Cadillac and all this stuff, and that's every day on Sunday. But soon as Monday comes, you are back to living like you have no God in your life. So no wonder we have church complaints. No wonder there are people who say, I will never come to your church. No wonder there are people who say, you know what, I don't want to be in your church as long as this person is there and that person is there. Why? Because people are not living this life. That's why we have 
church complaints. I'm trying to help somebody. Church complaints. The preacher preached too long, but yet you're not excited about the word of God simply because you refuse to apply the word of God. So therefore, the word of God really has no value or meaning to you. Church complaints. We have people who complain about those who pray too much. Well, you complaining about them who pray too much because you don't have a prayer life. The reason you don't have no prayer life is because you don't want to pray, because you don't want a relationship with God. So we have all these church complaints. We have all all of these issues, I don't know if I'm making sense to anybody, if I'm helping anybody, but I'm trying to get you to understand that we have all these church complaints simply because people refuse to live a life according to the God that they serve. You say you believe the Lord God, you believe his word, you believe what he say is so true, but yet you live everything opposite of what you say you believe. You say you believe that you're supposed to be holy but yet you're shacking up. I don't understand it. You say you believe you're supposed to save yourself until marriage, yet you can't seem to stop licking and sticking. Oh, I'm not supposed to say that. You're not, you don't know how to leave him alone, and you don't know how to leave her alone. You see, I'm trying to help somebody. You wonder why your children don't want to serve God, because they see how you serve God. We're talking about church complaints. So we're wondering why the local assembly is not growing. We're wondering why we're not seeing the man of a station of the power of God or the glory of God, because there's all these abominable things that is now taking place in the church. Wait a minute. We now allow homosexuals to lead praise and worship. We now allow homosexuals to be on the praise team. We allow them to direct the choir, to play the music. We allow them to stand in the pulpit, and they do not live the standard of godliness according to the word of God. That's why we have church complaints, and we have gotten to the place where we are so comfortable that we don't bother people anymore about it. It bothered me that I was uh, at a fellowship one time, and while I was there, they had this young, this couple who were there, and this couple was a, a same-sex married couple, and they joined the church, but they were not seeking to change their life. They were only seeking to say that they are in the church. But wait a minute, how are you going to be a part of the, the pillar and foundation of truth, which is the church, but you're not going to change your lifestyle to be accommodating to what God wants. I don't understand it. So we have church complaints, and we have mothers in the church who are saying this ought not be, but we have mothers in the church who ain't doing no better because they try to look like cover girls. We have deacons in the church who want everybody's wife but their own, and but yet these are church complaints because why? People don't want to live a godly lifestyle. I am really trying to make sure somebody understands this tonight. So look at me when I say this. The Bible says these words, let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. There has got to be a point in time when you change your life so there are no more church complaints concerning you. Well, I want to show you something because I want to help you some more. Even in the book of Isaiah, there is something here that I find would be even more prominent to share with you according to the word of the Lord. Here in Isaiah, the sixth chapter, it says, In the year the king Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up in his train, filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one of them had, each one had six wings with twain, that is two, and did he cover his face? With twain did he cover his feet? And with twain did he fly? And one cried unto another, he said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the doorpost of the and the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. What house? The house of the Lord. And then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone. In other words, here's what Isaiah the prophet says. He says, Hold up, wait a minute. There's something wrong with me. I'm in the presence of God and I realize there's something about me. I'm not as close to God as I thought I was. I'm not 
not as cool with God as I thought I was. I'm not as clean before God as I thought I was. He says, for I am undone. He says, in other words, I'm cut off from God. I'm not, I'm not really with that tight with God, okay? He says, because I am a man of unclean lips. He says, my lips are not clean, which means I don't talk the right language. Watch this. He says, not only this, and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. He says, so my surroundings are those type of people who have unclean lips. He says, from my eyes have seen the king and the Lord of hosts. He says, and then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having light coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongues from off the altar. And laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. So could it be that church complaints are really the result of sin that exists, and sin exists because we refuse to get into the presence of the Lord. Could it be that we refuse to get in the presence of the Lord because we know that we have not been living a godly life all week, and so that's why it's a challenge to get in the presence of the Lord, and since it's a challenge to get in the presence of the Lord, I can't really receive from the Lord because I haven't been open to the Lord, and since I haven't been open to the Lord, I really don't want to be honest with the Lord. See, because if I'm open with the Lord, I can be honest And he can come and cleanse me and make me clean like he desires. Now, watch this. He says, then flew, he says, and he says, and also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then said I, here am I, send me. How does uh, 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 Isaiah go from woe is me to here am I? Because he understands that his life had to change. People say they want to be used by God, but their life does not change. I want to tell you, you can't expect God to use you when you still have stuff going on in your life that does not please God. You can be anointed as you want to be, but if your life is a mess, you are simply an anointed mess. You can sing until the angels jump up and down, but if your life hasn't changed, you're just making a whole lot of noise. You can stand up and articulate the word of God from Genesis to Revelation, but if your life ain't clean, you are nothing but an articulate speaker. I'm trying to help somebody to get out of these church complaints. If uh, if Timothy had to live in a certain manner, if he had to behave himself in a certain manner because of the house of God, which is the church of the living God, then what makes you so different? Do you think because you have a title on your name that you are not required to change your lifestyle? Do you think because somebody acknowledges you uh, and who you are that you don't have to change? Do you think you have got so high that you don't have to change. Even Paul says, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching to that which is before, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Why is he pressing? Because he wants to be all that God would have him to be as far as being a godly man and a godly leader. And so, therefore, he understood that he had to rid his life of some stuff that would not be pleasing to God. I'm saying this to help somebody. If you're not willing to clean your life up, then you are going to have constant church complaints. And when there are church complaints, guess what? You can't help nobody. You can't benefit nobody. You can't strengthen nobody. You can't help nobody get to the next dimension or the next level in God. Why? All because of church complaints. Think about this. Here's what Paul says to Timothy. If I tarry long, if I don't get to you in a decent amount of time, he says, I want you to know how you ought to behave yourself or conduct yourself. What is it about people they don't know how to conduct themselves except in the midst of other people can we put on this act of salvation? That's when we're holy. That's when we're saved. When we're in front of everybody. But when we're not in front of everybody, can you really live a clean life?
right? The scripture says, not so much in my presence, but out of my presence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. If nobody's watching over you, can you still live clean? Can you still live holy? Can you still live righteous? Can you still live pure? Because if you can't, then there's going to be constant church complaints. Why? Because of your behavior. And so because of your behavior, your behavior is causing others to not want God. Your behavior is causing others not to turn to God. I want to tell you something, and I want to help you. I really want to help you. I remember the very first time I got married. I will never forget it. The very first time I got married, you know, I was so crazy about this woman. I was so in love. Oh, there was something about her, the way she smelled, the way she handled herself and everything. I just knew that this This was God's will for my life, okay, until after we got married six months later. She didn't want me no more because she didn't love me. She didn't care about me. She didn't respect me. And the only reason she married me because she was lonely and she had herpes. Yeah, thank God I didn't get it. But here's what happened. She had done me so bad that it was being being shown to the people in the church. There was a man in the church at that time who was working the camera for the church, uh, uh, doing video cameras, VC, you know, the VCR thing back then in the day, okay? And he, when he found out how I was done, that man said, after watching her and what she did to him, I'll never, ever get saved. Why? He had a church complaint because he saw a person who played to be a good evangelist, a person who seemed to really love God, but behind the scene, there was something else going on. On. Did you not hear when I told you earlier that you have to have a good re- reputation on the outside of the church? People ought to not, they ought not to see you as a fighter, as a brawler, as a cusser, as a drunk or any of that. They ought not see you as a gambler because when they see that, they say there is no difference between you and them. Wait a minute. The Bible says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new Creature, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So, how can there be church complaints unless you have decided to become new? When you are not new, that means you're still operating some old ways, some old principles, some old stuff that doesn't please God. And wait a minute, the Bible makes it clear that you have to present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service, and says, and be not conform to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So watch this. I'm trying to get you to understand that church complaints are a result of people's behavior. How are you behaving yourself? How are you conducting yourself? How is it that you are not able to get along with one another in the body of Christ? It's because you refuse to live the life that God wants you to live. Watch this. I need to show you this. I need to show you this. The Bible makes it clear that God is is not the author of confusion, but peace with all the saints, okay? He wants you to have peace as with all the saints. Okay, watch this. So the Bible says, um, as much as it be possible, live at peace with all men, okay? And the Bible says, live at peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. So if you don't know how to live at peace with all men, you don't know how to be holy. Okay, because it goes together. Now, watch this. Not only that, but watch this. If you cannot live at peace with all men, it's because you are living in the presence of confusion. And the presence of of confusion is the absence of order. So those who like disorder in in their life are people who cannot get along with other people. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to give my own self a hand on that one. People who would prefer disorder or around them are people who can't get along with other folk around them. And so because of that, they are not living at peace. And they're not living at peace because they prefer confusion. They prefer confusion because they act, they don't know how to conduct 
themselves. Since they don't know how to conduct themselves, there are constant church complaints. You can't get along with folk. You don't want to be bothered with folk. And when you see this one and that one, you want to get away from them. There is something wrong with you, not them. There's something wrong with you because God wants you to be better than what you were. He wants you to live better than what you used to live. And so people see the real you, and they like, I don't want no part of God because I see you living in this manner. So here's what Paul says, he says, but if I carry alone, he says, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God. You ought to know how to conduct yourself. You ought to know how to be in order and how to have conduct in that church, which is the house of God. You ought to know how to manage your life where it makes you look like you had godliness, where it makes you look like you are literally living for God and other people want to follow the God that you serve or they want the God you serve because they see you as being different. They see you not like they see the world, but they see you as a beacon of light, as a beacon of hope, as the possibility of change. So we have church complaints because people find something wrong with people, and it's because people refuse to live a clean life. People refuse to conform to what God wants. So if you're not willing to conform to what God wants, how can you tell others how to conform to what God wants or what God expects? I'm trying to help somebody because of all the church complaints that is standing in the way of what should be taking place. We are in a treacherous time today where men are lovers of themselves. Uh -huh. They are bolsters and heady and high-minded. They are unfaithful. They are unholy, disobedient to parents. They are incontinent and fierce. They are traitors and all of this other stuff. They are lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And the problem is that they have a form of godliness. They have a form of godliness because they refuse to change their behavior. They have no etiquette. They come to the house of God and act any old kind of way and will treat them. Wait a minute. I remember when I came up, you know, people didn't even pull out a cigarette in front of the house of God. Now you'll get right out on church property and sit there and smoke. What? That must mean that you don't want God in your life because you're smoking him out. I'm just simply saying, you know, you can say what you want to. There are some things we ought not to do because we ought to seek to be different. We ought to seek to be better. Why? Because when we serve well, we receive receive uh, a great reward for doing what God has wanted us and called us to do. So think to yourself, are you uh, the reason for church complaints because you don't know how to be seen, behave yourself in the house of the Lord? Is it because you don't know how to operate in the house of the Lord? Are you a person who does not understand that the church, that the church belongs to God? And because the church belongs to God, it is the pillar or the support and the foundation or the ground of truth. Uh -huh. So if you, if the church members and affairs do not conform to the standard set forth according to this epistle, then the bulwark of truth, which is the church, will seriously be undermined. So listen, how many of you are tired of seeing the church undermined? How many of you are tired of seeing the church not really bloom and blossom like it's supposed to? It's simply because people don't know how to conform their behavior. You have to to change. You have to be different. You have to live according to what God wants, not what you want. I'm just about out of time, but I'm trying to get you to understand the reason that we have church complaints is because people don't know how to behave themselves. And so because people don't know how to behave themselves, people can't get along with one another. And because people can't get along with one another, we now look like we are no longer the people of God, but a divided 
people. That's why we have folk always trying to bring confusion in the body of Christ. They're always bringing mess in the body of Christ. They're always pointing the finger at everyone else in the body of Christ when they themselves are the hypocrites. They themselves are the serpents. They themselves are the witches. They themselves are the warlocks. They themselves are the wizards because they refuse to submit themselves and live according to what God said in his word. Listen, an old scripture people know all around the world is Second Corinthians seven, or excuse me, Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles seven and fourteen, which says, "If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and will heal their land." Let me tell you something: you can't expect God to do anything in your land until you decide to turn from your wicked way, because your wicked way is affecting your behavior, and your behavior is your conduct, and is your conduct that is causing complaints and it's your complaints that is keeping the church from moving forward and growing. The reason we have 42 churches on one street and every church has about 10 members is because you got the same old religious folk with that nasty spirit that refuses to change. You're nasty in the way you talk to people. You're nasty in the way you live your life for God. You're nasty in the way you conduct yourself. You're even nasty with how you dress yourself when you're showing all of your cleavage and showing you all of your rear end. That straight nasty is because your behavior has not changed. Your conduct has not changed. And so because of that, we have people who do not know how to endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace for bearing one another in love. We don't know what the love of God is because we refuse to live by it and apply it to our life. So we have all of these issues in the body of Christ, and it's because of church complaints, because people refuse to change their behavior, which is their conduct. Uh, Miss Kimmy Kim, after all this that you have heard, is there anything you want to question me on or anything you want to say? Are you there, Kimmy Kim? I am. I'm so sorry. What was the question? I was so into your dress code now because that's what we're on when it comes to the dress code uh, church that I don't you know. <laughs> but I'm so so what's, my, what's the question? So my, my question is based upon all that I shared uh, concerning church complaints, all because of behaviors, which is conducts that have not changed. Are there any concerns or questions that you might have on this subject? How do you approach someone um, in a manner of love when you're um, trying to show them the proper dress attire or how to, you know, um, do that in love? Because, you know, you have some people that may not know, and that's why they mm-hmm. do dress that way. Okay, part of the things, one of the things we can do, and some people don't um, see it this way, you know, you, it's, it's, it's nearly, it is nearly impossible for you to get someone to change their dress code unless you are literally willing to invest in their dress code, meaning this, that if you, if you find that the way someone dress is too revealing, too provocative, too perverse, you know, take a moment and become be, be become a beloved sister or brother in Christ, and say, let's spend the day together. Take time, go out and grab a cup of coffee and get a, a, a cheeseburger or something, and then say, you know, you've been in my spirit. Let's go. I want to take you somewhere. I want to show you. I want to take you somewhere and go shopping with them, and you know, help them to try on something that may be more uh, benefiting. That you know they'll mm. understand. Listen, you know, because what we want to do, the Bible says, he that wins souls is wise. So we don't, so in love, in love, love is an action word. So it's not just, okay, come on, um, you know, do this. No, it's come on, let me show you something. Um, And in showing them, say, you know what, I believe, you know, after you try it on about six, seven outfits, I believe that this would look so good on you when you come to church again. 
And then, you know what, I believe that'll look good on you too. You know, take a couple hundred dollars and not, don't think about yourself. Think about somebody else, right? And this is just me. Take them and, and you know, and show them what something good looks like for a believer. That would make them say, wow, I feel so special in this. Some people need that kind of love because they've never had it. And they've never had anyone to take the time to say, hey, this is what you should do, or well, this is what will be helpful to you and for you. Um, and you still look good. You still got your fineness. You know, you still, if you will, and excuse me for saying this, you still got some kind of sex appeal, but you're not revealing. You're leaving something to man's imagination. You understand what I'm saying? So what you're doing is you're, you're affirming them while you're correcting what's wrong. Amen. Amen. And, I love it. Amen. <laughs> Yeah, man. Amen. Anything else? <laughs> Anything no, else? No, that's all I have. The lesson was just on time. <laughs> wow. We have to wow. live a daily life for the Lord, and it, it uh, involves Him doing mm-hmm. the purging process. And right. you're so right. I, I love this. <laughs> well, amen. You know, it, 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 again, if this thing really struck struck a spiritual nerve, if you will, he says, Paul says these words again, these things write I unto thee, hoping to come unto thee shortly. But if I tarry long or if I take too long, if I don't get there in the time frame that I'm expecting, he says, I want you to know how you ought to behave or conduct yourself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. So we want people to live in truth. We want people to experience truth so that they can be free by the truth. But the only way is they've got to understand how to behave themselves or conduct themselves so that we don't have all these complaints. Granted, we're never going to satisfy everybody. But if we can handle certain things that will start people to looking back to God and respecting the house of God, which is his house, we just might see what we've been looking for in this day and time, um, both here and there. Amen? Amen. 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 Wow. Amen. Wonderful. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, I'm out of time, and I'm... Certainly grateful that I had the opportunity to share this prayerfully. Uh, if somebody has been helped, somebody has been blessed, somebody has been strengthened, encouraged. I even pray somebody was convicted so they'll be converted. I pray somebody was comforted and consoled because at the end of the day, I really want somebody to be challenged to be better and do better as we live for God. And please understand this, that any time um, we as preachers share any particular subject, we never share it to someone without sharing it to ourselves first. So, you know, this message, this lesson goes to me as well, amen, so that it just reminds me not to have to the same conduct as when I was living any old kind of way. When I came on the Lord's side, it was my desire to live for the Lord, and so my conduct must be conducive to what God really wants. So we can't, we won't have church complaints when people change their conduct in the house of the Lord towards him. Amen. Amen. It Amen. sounds like a wonderful, Amen. wonderful piece that I can definitely Amen. listen to over and over and over because <laughs> you're blessing my soul right now. Yes. We wow. must continually uh, you know, um focus on what, what God precepts and principles are all about so that we can decrease ourselves and allow him to Feed us his spirit. Amen. Amen. <laughs> absolutely. 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 Yeah. And we say amen again. You know, and again, it was such That's a blessing. Uh, <laughs> we we did miss uh, Elder Ernest Richards, our host tonight. Amen. But we're praying that he is well in his travels. Amen. And we look forward to him being back. Amen. So, you know, he would say, put a pep in your step and all of that stuff. That's him. Amen. <laughs> a glide in your stride and all of that. Amen. But listen, here's what we want you to do. You know, because, you know, he does that. He does that, and he says this and that and that. But listen, Tim, before we get off the air, tell people how they can contact you. 
sure. And I just need to say once again, thank you for this wonderful uh, message that you had uh, shared with us. And it was well needed. And um, this is for you. Because you are so awesome. Oh, awesome. And uh, and, uh, wonderful words. Wonderful words. But uh, my name is Kimmy Kim, and you can reach me on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. Um, If you ever have any prayer requests or if you need someone to pray with you, don't hesitate to reach out to us at elationmagazine at gmail.com or elationradio at gmail.com. And once again, I just want to thank you for this wonderful opportunity, and uh, I'm going to pass it back to you. Amen. Well, thank you again. Uh, and I do apologize about Tuesday due, due to the fact that I was traveling. It took away some things because I had to handle some business. Amen. Uh, but we will get together and try to reschedule that business that we were planning. In Jesus' name. Um, I am Amen. Apostle I am Apostle Irvin Whitlow. I can be found on Facebook under Irvin Whitlow. I also have a public profile page there, which is Apostle I period A period Whitlow, W-H-I-T-O-W. Our church is on Facebook. It is New Dimensions Prophetic Fellowship, uh, along with my wife, Pastor Elise Whitlow. We are located in Savannah, Georgia. Um, And our church is at 221 Executive Circle, Suite 11 in the Executive Center. I promise you that if you come, you will never be the same because you will experience God in an unusual manner. I am on uh, Instagram under the number 5 underscore fold, F-O-L-D underscore man, M-A-N, 5 fold man. I'm also on Twitter under Apostle Whitlow. Amen. Uh, We're just here to serve the people of God and minister to the people of God. And we just really want you to be the best that God would have you to be. And if you don't remember anything else from tonight, please remember that church complaints are a result of behaviors and conducts that have not been changed or corrected by the word of God. Please go with God. Know that he will go with you. Let us pray, Father. We thank you again for our time together. Thank you for your word, what you have revealed to us, what you have shared with us, what you have imparted to us. Let it be nourishing in our spirit and yield fruit of righteousness in our life. Oh, God, we pray that you would get the honor and the glory. If there's anyone not saved, we pray that you save them. Anyone needing to be delivered, deliver them. Anyone needing healing, heal them like only you can. We thank you. We give you praise in Jesus. In Max's name, we pray, amen. Please do join us on the Pastor's Corner every Thursday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I promise you that your life will never be the same from the things that God gives us to share with you. Peace, good night, take care. Good night. All right. Great.
Thank you. 